When looking at an opportunity within the oil market uh, and looking at a company that's just starting out, one has to consider that there are a lot of costs potentially coming down the pipe in exploration. So if I was to offer you an opportunity for a company talking to a chief executive now about the business that doesn't have to go through the costly exploration process and has a lot of experience uh, within its board, let me introduce you to this company. Uh, it's called uh, Advanced Energy. It's listed on the AIM market and its chief executive is Leslie Peterkin. He joins us now. Leslie, good to talk to you. Thanks indeed Thank for you. joining Thank us. Thank you for the invitation. Well, tell us a little bit more about the business because as I said at the top, uh, we don't have to go through this costly and risky exploration uh, process. Mm -hmm. uh, you've gone past that because you're acquiring these assets that have already been to that point established. That's correct. I mean, our strategy is uh, relatively well defined. Uh, we're looking only at assets that have been uh, discovered, uh, may or may not have been uh, already developed, may be developed but haven't been optimally developed, or in the case of the Buffalo Field, which we acquired an interest in this year, it's been developed before, abandoned, but it wasn't fully developed, and now we're going to go back and fully develop it. One of the questions is, and I guess we might come to this throughout the, the discussion, talking about the various things, surely they were abandoned for a good reason. There were, it was abandoned in this case for the Buffalo field, it was abandoned for a good reason. At the time, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty about the structure and the techniques available weren't able to resolve that. But now we have better techniques in terms of seismic resolution. And now we can define a, a crest on the structure which wasn't defined previously. And that's what we're targeting. Any new technologies involved here, or is it yeah. just um, new, a, a new, re price? new reprocessing technology? Twenty years ago, was uh, was not what it is today, and we've been able to apply that, or at least the operator has been able to apply that to the to the structure, to the asset, and it has uh, brought to life, uh, or brought to, brought made clear. I'm trying to use simple words here. The uh, the, the crest of the structure. It's like a dome, if you like, yeah. and in the uh, in the earlier part of the uh, the development, they more or less went around the sides, now we're going for the crest. Right. You've got a drill campaign coming up yeah. on, on B10. That's now, this sounds, having spoken to you about this, an exciting prospect. Uh, what do we know about what it is you're drilling and why are you drilling it? Yeah, well, we're drilling it. This crest that I've said that hasn't been drilled is what we're targeting. So we're going to drill a well to appraise that area that has had never to date been uh, been drilled, and we're hoping to uh, establish an oil column of around about eighty meters by doing that and by getting that eighty meter column. Hopefully, that's what we're going to get. Then the certified uh, resources that we have at the moment at the 2C level, as we call it, the probable level, is 34 million barrels. And that is the project that we're hoping to you know, bring to development, which is a sizable volume of, uh, of oil. And that's shared 50-50 between us and the operator, Canar and Petroleum, who are based in Perth. Mm. Right, they're based in Perth. Where is this B10 oil well placed? So it's on the Buffalo Field, as we've discussed. It's in the Timor Sea. Right. And um, it lies between Australia and Timor. And in East Timor, um, in this case, is the, uh, the jurisdiction where the, the asset now sits. It used to be in Australia. There was a maritime boundary issue that was resolved after many years in 2018. And this asset moved into East Timorese waters. And uh, we're very happy with that. Um, I worked in Australia for 10 years and it was in Perth. I, I was involved in a, a number of fields in that area. Uh, I know it well. I know the, uh, the, the jurisdiction well. And so we're very comfortable with uh, this location. Yeah. Um Talk to me a little bit more about what we're expecting here in terms of what we already know about the economics, about mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing, how much we're spending to begin with, I guess, in the, on the drill program and, and the potential return. Well, we're going to drill a well, which is an appraisal well. It's going to be somewhere in the 20 to $25 million you know, range, depending on exactly how quickly we manage to drill it. It's a 30-odd day well. Um, if it goes fast, it'll be cheaper, which is good. Um, once we've done that, um, we will hopefully have the, the outcome that we're looking for. Um, we're looking then at uh, going to be developing the asset for around about 100, 125 million of capex. Um, but uh, the most important thing is this, we're spending all that money, but what are we going to get out of yeah, it? Yeah. It's a very good reservoir. We expect to be able to, if we get the outcome we anticipated, the ability to produce uh, the field initially at around about 40,000 barrels a day. And as a 50% uh, partner, that means 20,000 barrels a day for advance. The economics are, are extremely good for this, uh, for this asset because it, the, the oil is a very light oil and we get this possibility to accelerate production um, on, um, on the field by going to these high rates. Of course, eventually it will decline, but it means we get a lot of 
of cash up front. And we have economics uh, shown in our website. And I was just going discussing with you a, a nice, simple way of understanding it. The economics were done that you see on the website are done at fifty dollars, but now we're at eighty dollars. Sure. At seventy dollars, they're fifty. The, well, the metrics are fifty percent greater than they are as shown on the website. But the one way I like to put it now is that with the it, assuming we have a, a something of an, a, a, an oil price increase at the time we sanction the project, somewhere in the middle of next year, you can say uh, one hundred, two hundred, three hundred. The one hundred is the IRR. The 200 is the NPV net to advance, and the 300 is the net cumulative cash flow to, to advance. You can see there's a lot of cash mm. coming to advance. And, and, and just confirm, is this conventionally um, going to be pulled out of the ground conventionally, or are you fracking this? No, 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 we're not fracking. We don't need to frack these. We've got an excellent re reservoir. For those who are technically inclined, we've yeah. got a, a Darcy reservoir, right. which means we've got very high productivity wells. Uh, each of the wells, or two of the wells in the previous development, produced at 20,000 barrels a day each, uh, which made 40,000 barrels a day, and we will have the same reservoir developed and uh, f uh, wells completed um, uh, this time around as well. Mm. Assuming things go to plan, then what? So, assuming then they, they go to plan with the appraisal, well, well, yep. yep. Uh, then we'll immediately move into development mode. So we'll look to finalize a field development plan. Yep. We already have a draft. It's a 200 odd page uh, document. Mm. We will then integrate the data from this well with the existing database. We'll have finalized the FTP. We'll agree it as a joint venture. In, the, in, in parallel, we'll start discussions with funders in order to fund the, the, the development, the 100 plus million dollars that I mentioned. And we would expect to take FID no later than the middle of next year. Mm. And then thereafter, 18 months to first oil, somewhere in Q4, uh, 2023. And how are you going to pay for all this? What's the, what's the Our expectation like? is that we will be able to, because it's such a, you know, a robust economic you know, proposition, uh, we'll readily be able to uh, uh, fund it through, through debt to a large extent, and then we'll do some equity as well. Mm. So this is B10. Yep. What else have you got cooking at the moment which should ultimately provide opportunity for investors? Yeah, we're cooking quite a lot of stuff, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> I can smell it. You go. <laughs> tell, me what, tell me what's, what's uh, on the barbecue. Well, we can't say too much because right. of uh, our AIM regulations, but uh, we're looking, we're in we're in dialogue with two parties at the moment. One is uh, around some production, um, and another is uh, a Buffalo lookalike, in fact, uh, an appraisal situation which is lying dormant for a number of years. There's a lot of upside associated with it, and uh, we're having a very constructive conversation with, the, with them. We have two other assets that we're very interested in, but we haven't managed to get the conversation going quite so far along the line as we would have liked to. But these things take time. Uh, when I first started looking at Buffalo as a great opportunity in early 2019, we only got the company up and running in, uh, in, in February last year, and then we did the deal in, um, in April, May, or sorry, March, April this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this, la this year. So there's a sometimes quite a lot of gestation period to get these things done, but patience okay. is key. You, you've got a, a long history in, yeah. in the sector. How yeah. difficult has it been the last 18 months? I mean, getting this company up and running in that time, you've got a, an opportunity here to drill this very soon. Yeah. Um, and you've done this under lockdown. Yeah. Um, of course, Australia has had its share of it lockdown. Yeah. Um, just, just tell us how it's been. <laughs> Well, I have to say that we we uh, list, we went we took over the company that uh, was uh, was Andalas and uh, completely transformed yeah. the company with the board change and uh, essentially uh, it was a it was a shell I think mm -hmm. is the easiest way to, to describe it um, and then six weeks later we had two um, uh, double whammy I think is the you know, the right phrase um, where the we had lockdown mm -hmm. and we had the oil price crash and we did think what are we doing. <laughs> But we picked ourselves up and took the view that, in fact, we have no debt and we don't have uh, production that's under the water and um, we have lots mm. of opportunities. Mm. And also, this would be, well, that old price crash is the sixth time I've seen this in my career. Mm. Mm. And I, we have a lot of experience and knowledge of how to play that. Um, mm. A lot of people knee jerk. The important thing is not to knee jerk. Is mm. the, the oil business will continue, mm. and it has to continue, as we all know, and that's a different conversation. And our expectation that the oil price would come back, I have to say, in all honesty, I didn't expect to see it at 80 oh, no, today. It's incredible. Amazing. Uh, yeah. But these things have happened in the past. We take a very conservative view of oil price. 
Um, 50 55, we just, it's where we make our decisions. And uh, we don't get sucked into the $100 oil scenario because mm. a lot of people did yeah. that in the past yeah. and it didn't work yeah. well. So yeah. you have to be very disciplined in how you manage your finances and your decision making with respect to assets. $100 only. I mean, I saw on the evening standard the other day, 120. I've seen 200. I mean, look, we won't, we won't go there because I'm, I'm seen I'm, it before. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, <laughs> it. that's it. Exactly. Um, look, um, let's bring up a share price chart. I know yep. as chief executive, I always say to CEOs, I know I'm not exp asking you for a full explanation about where we are, but mm. just give us a, a roadmap as to what's been happening here because um, we don't have much because obviously the company's not very old, but no. um, uh, we are where we are. 35, I think, million sterling, I think, is yep. the price or the market cap yep. on the London yep. market. But I know you deal in dollars, don't you? Yeah, well, we tend to think in dollars because yeah. um, they all price US in dollars. dollars yeah. and, and we're not and we're not based in the UK, although the yeah. company is based in, you know, it's listed here. But uh, you've got costs in Australian dollars. We, now, yeah. we always think in dollars, but that, that, that doesn't really matter. It's a nice number. It's fifty sure. million dollars at the moment, okay. which is a nice number. But basically, we started with Andalas. You could we could say it was effectively a market cap of zero. We had nothing really of yeah. any consequence. And, uh, and then when we did the RTO, you can see that uh, that was in. I'm looking at the uh, the bottom line here, kind of so I can see May. So this is just after the RTO uh, when the, the share price. Be, there we have it. There, yeah, there you go. So time. that's after yeah. the RTO. So it shot up after the mm -hmm. RTO, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been ticking along. I think there's a lot of expectation, anticipation about the drilling of the well, the B10 well, the appraisal mm -hmm. well that we're going to drill on the field, and uh, and it's kicked up uh, sometime around the uh, after the summer holidays, by the look of it, mm -hmm. um, where and it's plateaued out. And there's a lot of conversation on the uh, the bulletin boards about the, uh, the the low risk aspect of the uh, of the opportunity and the fact that it's going to throw off a huge amount of crash for both parties in the in the joint venture mm. um, so there is an expectation that it will kick up again uh, towards the time that we actually spud the well mm. Because clearly, you know, 30 days and then a discovery, or not a discovery, don't talk about discovery, but getting the result that we want, yeah, I get it. Yeah, um, yeah. we're going to clearly have a transformed company. And that's the whole point about this exercise. It's transformational. Does the board own much in terms of uh, invested interest? Yeah, both myself and the chairman have a similar holding in the company. We owned a little bit over 2% of the of the company. We had uh, quite a bit more before we did the RTO, yeah, but then we brought in a bunch of other investors. Yeah. Um, and we in, intend to you know, keep investing in the company as we go along. So you're on the road to talk to retail investors? Are you encouraging retail? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And um, we were here this week. This is my first trip in 18 months, actually. Right, so right. you got me on my first trip to <laughs> yeah, London in 18 months, which went very easily, actually. And uh, the, uh, you know, the idea here is I've been here for a week and we're talking to a lot of people, uh, including yourselves and um, trying to encourage people yeah. to invest in the company and invest in our future you know, uh, strategy, which we think is very uh, tuned to the times, the ESG time. We are only looking at existing assets. We're not doing any uh, expiration. And so our carbon um, print, uh, mm -hmm. footprint, as they talk about, is likely to be very low. Mm, of course, we need we do need the oil. Uh, uh, well, you see what's happening in the UK now. Yeah. Do yeah. we need hydrocarbons or not? Yeah. Um, we can't live without them, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. at the yeah. current time. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, uh, B10, very quickly, going back to the beginning, um, what should we know in terms of uh, signposting from the companies to how successful this has been? What should we be looking for? Dates or what are you going to tell the market? Uh, well, we will spud the well sometime in November. Mm -hmm. um, it will be about 30 days to get to, um, to TD, as we call it, total debt. They, I expect within November that we will go through the reservoir. Uh, so the key piece of information, first piece of information will be when we come out of the last, what we call casing, before we go into the reservoir. And so we'll be looking for the top level of the reservoir. And the shallower it is, the bigger the potential oil column. So this is the very first key piece of information we'll be looking for. OK, well, we'll look forward to that. In the meantime, thanks indeed for joining us on your trip here yeah. uh, to London. It's a pleasure having you in, Leslie. Thanks indeed for joining us. Leslie Peter is the Chief Executive Officer of Advanced Energy. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.